Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to those on the European continent. Welcome to the first ATF Plugged In series. This 45 minute session will give us an update on the diverse and incredibly massive market that Indonesia has become. Joining us are veteran buyers from significant platforms in Indonesia. With us today, we have Aryo Bagus Widyat Miko, Chief Content Officer of PT Digdaya Duta Digital, Bernardi Bachmat, VP of Programming Acquisition from SCTV, Hendy Lim, Content and Channel Vice President of IEG, and Lucy Chaya Wibisono, General Manager of PT Telecomunikasi Cellular. We're also privileged to have David Scott, Associate Director on Service Providers and Platforms from Omdia, Omdi joining us all the way from Australia um, for this session's moderator. He will begin the session with a quick overview of the market, sharing some exclusive statistics. Let's welcome David as we begin this session. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our listeners from around the world today. We welcome you from over 35 different countries, I believe, that are tuning in um, for this session where we will zoom in on Indonesia. So our objective with our time today is to share some of the thinking about what buyers want in Indonesia. So if you refer to the slide, you'll see the potential of the Indonesian media market and why you should be involved in the market. So let's look at some of the key facts. So Indonesia is the fourth most populous country in the world with 272 million people are forecast by the end of 2020. It's home to the fourth highest number of TV households in the world at around 68 million. So there is no wonder why Indonesia is the target of many of the online video companies to grow their businesses um, in the country, given its vast population and the opportunity that this provides to scale. So there's relatively inexpensive OTT services are also finding favour in Indonesia, particularly during this COVID lockdown period. So Omnia forecast 9.6 million uh, OTT subscriptions by end 2020. So most OTT subscriptions are bundled users. Uh, they're active on the service, but they're sponsored by a telco. So pay TV penetration is low, around 11% by the end of uh, 2020 is our forecast. Uh, that's around 7 million subscribers in the country. So the, the low rate is largely due to the widespread availability of illegal TV services. Um, and the consumer's propensity to pay for content is actually quite low. But look at the flip side, the potential for growth is huge. So we take that. Uh, free platforms, terrestrial, satellite are dominant. They dominate the TV landscape. Um, they count for around 90% um, of uh, TV households in Indonesia. In terms of revenue, uh, Omnia forecast around over 75% uh, of online video revenues in Indonesia will originate from advertising by the end of 2020. Facebook, YouTube are the dominant, uh, they dominate online video advertising in the country. So, and we think that ad supported online video services will generate around 377 million USD in 2020. Uh, this is compared with 119 million USD for subscription video services. Pay TV still holds the lion's share of video subscription revenue in Indonesia at 472 million, but OTT subscription revenue is growing rapidly. We forecast that will double over the next five years at around uh, 240 thereabouts uh, USD. You'll note from the bar chart on the slide in front of you that there will be a dip in that gray line in 2020. Uh, this is given one of the big players hook uh, left the market last month in April, but we expect it to quickly return to growth um, in the, for over the next five years. So now I'd like to invite our expert panelists 
who deal with the content strategies in Indonesia. Now they're going to discuss for you the latest developments in Indonesia. So let's start with um, Hendy. So Hendy, if I may, hi. I'll ask. Hi. Um, how, so how does one enter the market in order to sell successfully in Indonesia? Can you please talk us through that? Okay, uh, that's a good question, and actually a lot of uh, a lot of people are asking this question to me also personally. I think um, when it comes to the Indonesian market, I would say that probably it is for some people it is very easy. They don't have any difficulties, but some people they spend years and then wondering. Uh, what they should do, you know, they think that we've, we've done everything we could and yet we still cannot uh, penetrate or we cannot crack this market. So I think the, the but actually the, the key success factor is very easy because when you are penetrating the market, you are selling the content. So when you are selling the content to be successful, logically that you, you have to have the right content. It is as easy and as simple and as logical as that. But the question is, what is the right content? For some people, you know, when they talk to me, they say that this is an excellent content. It has been proven success everywhere, blah, blah, blah. And then the cost of production is enormous, very big, big budget and so on and so forth. I think some people kind of misunderstood that uh, it is to be translated as the, 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 the good content or the right content. The right content would be the content that the Indonesian people are looking for. And when I say the Indonesian people here, I am referring to the mass audience, the grassroots audience. So if you want to be successful, you are not targeting a certain elite. You are targeting the mass audience, the grassroots. So what the, the what are the the the, the 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 grassroots audience are looking for? So in this case, to be honest, Indonesian audience are not as sophisticated as uh, audience from, for example, Japan or uh, Europe or in the US. So they are much more different. So you have to understand the demography of, of the Indonesian audience also. So I think uh, more than 40% or probably more than 50% of our audience are still below 40 years old. So this is much, uh, this is a much, uh, uh, this is a, a market that is much uh, dominated by young audience. And then also the, 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 the viewing pattern and then the taste towards the content is not sophisticated. So I think uh, in a nutshell, this is the kind of content that has more chance to be successful. Okay, great. I'll bring Ario in there if I may. Um, so Ario, uh, there's a lot of foreign um, people on, on listening in at the moment and very interested to get into the Indonesian market. Uh, are co-productions uh, popular across the country? I'd be interested to, to learn that. Yes. Um, first of all, uh, I came from from the, the 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 company or the group for distributing the or, or giving the connection by internet. So um, my current my current company now is 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 like a pay TV or, or uh, IPTV. So in this case, um, we need any kind of, of content, and then uh, for sure kind of format uh, co-production is also very, very interesting for us because uh, currently I think people can, can watch everything and many kind of uh, content uh, through many kind of uh, 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 access. So being a different, uh, creating creative with, with the, the new format, the co-production is, is very uh, open for, for many, many, many viewers here. Right. Well, that's interesting. Thank you very much. Um, so, Bernardi, just to bring you into the into the conversation in relation to uh, which countries' content, because as a as we know from registrations, we had over thirty five different countries are listening into us now. So, it'd be I'm sure they'd be interested, as I am in Australia. Um, which countries' content is popular in Indonesia? Okay. Thank you, David, and thank you, Atia, for having uh, me uh, joining this event. Um, uh, let me introduce my name, Barnadi. I'm working for uh, SCTV, actually one of the leading P2R uh, in Indonesia. You know, uh, as uh, David mentioned, that P2R is still dominant, uh, dominant in Indonesia. So uh, maybe I'll more talking about uh, uh, P2R side, maybe Handy Lim, Aryo, and uh, Lutfi will 
expert for uh, another platform, but uh, I will try more for uh, FTA side. So um, if you want to know about the content, what buyers want or what we want uh, to buy, also we have to know about what audience want. Um, in free to air, maybe a uh, bit uh, different with the uh, handy said that in a uh, free to air, the main audience actually housewife and uh, 40 up. So that's why the preference for this audience uh, for housewife is actually uh, local drama. Yeah, local drama is very strong in our territory. So not only local drama, actually local program, yeah, but local drama is very strong. That's why in, in the prime times, local drama is uh, always uh, do, do, dominate, uh, domination of local drama is very strong. So uh, uh, what so uh, what, what about the foreign content? If we talk about the main audience is housewife and local drama is also strong. So another uh, content from uh, foreign uh, content is actually that uh, has a proximity and also closeness with the local drama is Indian. So that's why many titles of Indian drama series was very successful in, in Indonesia compared to other, uh, compared to other uh, series, for example, like Korean, Turkish, yes, maybe several titles also successful, but Indians, I think more than, than, than the rest of them. So that's- Great, but, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll like to come back to that, um, Banani, if I may, but I just want to bring uh, Luthfi into this, uh, into the conversation as well. In terms of, uh, as Banani was saying, I mean, Indian content is obviously quite popular, looking at from the housewives um, in that genre of the of, uh, drama titles. Do you find that that um, also resonates for other territories? Um, I'd imagine that uh, Korean dramas, are they popular across the country? And yeah, please. Yeah, thank, thank you, David, for the opportunity in. Uh, let me introduce first myself. I'm, I'm Lutfi from, basically I'm a little bit different with other finalists because I'm from, from Telco company and uh, we have Backstream. Uh, we develop Backstream as our OTT platform. Currently already have 7 million FIU and 25 million downloaders. Uh, I think for Maxstream as, as OTT is a little bit different because uh, uh, we are a, we are live on small screen, so maybe the 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 viewers also more like to view that more personal instead of the family movie. So the the behavior of the view is viewers is like more like more like to the series and also yeah drama, but the not the what what we sell is not a uh, family drama not uh, light drama but more to the deep to the the the, the apa the problematic on in the story so the story is more important to us the, than the other country uh, of origin yeah yes yeah, so, and uh, but the instead uh, the question is popular in indonesia of course right now right now is korean drama is popular but uh, and, uh, uh, surprisingly, in linear, uh, we have also linear channel in our platform is uh, Z from Bollywood and also also uh, have a higher viewers also in Maxstream. So that's why uh, I think in Maxstream is op open for all, of the, all, all kind of, basically we need to educate the customer with the, <laughs> the story or something, yeah. Yep. Oh well, I'm sure that they'll be, uh, you know, the listeners be pleased to hear that you're the welcoming of um, of all different origins of the content. Um, so, I guess picking up on that, I mean, Bernardi, we were saying with the um, the Indian uh, content is popular in the country, as is Korean. We've talked about. There has been just to just for some of the listeners, because we've had some pre-registered questions coming in relating to Japan, um, also Turkey, Russia, across Europe. Um, is can they have confidence as well of coming into the um, you know selling content in? Of course, of course, there, there, there is still an open opportunity to, to, to have them. But um, I will tell you about the characteristic characteristic of Indonesian audience that maybe Handy Lim uh, told that uh, our our audience actually demanding not for a high quality uh, programs, but more uh, demanding for the suitable of the content for them. Yeah, so the proximity, the the closeness with the with with the with the culture that more important. So that's why Indian more more close with with with, with us because 
uh, usually they, the story talk about uh, women as a victim, uh, the, the, the intrigue or uh, uh, many twists and, and uh, the fast pacing and also um, uh, triangle of story and uh, it's kind of like that, like that, like that. So that, that more important for us. So uh, um, the content could be from everywhere, but actually the content should be suitable with us. How, how suitable? the content with our audience, that will be more important. Yeah, okay, great. Well, I think that that leads uh, in quite well. Ario, I was going to come back to you just in relation to the genre. Um, so we sort of talked about uh, what, what genres work in Indonesia, but um, is there any particular genres that you would say work the best? Um, and we did have some uh, interest around the Japanese animation. Is that being bought in Indonesia as an example? Okay, David. Uh, before 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 answering the, the question, um, I agree with with the the previous uh, one that from Pak Hendy, uh, the grassroots for the audience viewers, and then uh, from others Bernaldi and Lutfi as well. I have a theory like the vertical and horizontal because this is different um, uh, from the terrestrial from the pay TV, uh, different different the, the what you call it the, the, the habit so um, if I may say like like the, the, the terrestrial is kind of a, like a horizontal so based on hours uh, not sorry vertical so it's, it's based on the, the, the hours uh, habit viewing from early morning to the, the late evening and then they find the, the, the rating and then share everything but in the pay TV like the, the OTT one as well is is different. With the horizontal, this is by day, by date. So, so the, the viewing is not by hours, but meaning more for the uh, weekdays and weekend as well. So uh, this kind of characteristics is is different also uh, creating the, the the users from the pay TV side or the OTT. Maybe it's not viewers; it's more users kind of object. But from the terrestrial, probably is is viewers. So the genre is, is based on the, 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 the from, from, from my platform, the IPTV, is, is there's, there's no particular because it's, it's open to, to family members from the uh, housewife, from the father, the parents, from the, the kids, uh, so the family members. So by day, they, they watch into the specific kind of uh, genre channels, uh, uh, linear one that, that Ludwig had mentioned. But also some uh, uh, in, in, in the other way around, they, they also go to the video on demand. So there was any kind of genre that prefer from them. But initially, um, with the current technology, the, the, the community uh, base is very interesting. So like you mentioned about the, the animation, Japanese animation or other uh, animation creating from other uh, country is creating a uh, huge demand by, by the community side as well. Uh, mm, it's, it's, it's also like the, the Korean drama or, or Japanese drama, if there is a communi community base, then it's more easy to, to, to bring more viewers, more users. Yeah, so okay, yes, right. because the animation of, of the, the Japanese animation, still there's a community base, uh, so the interest, the, the demand on that still huge. Um, and then nowadays also the esports model kind of uh, animation also become like uh, popular also. Yeah, that's, fantastic. That's from us. With the, and uh, just jump in, yeah, so Hendy, um, would that be something you'd agree on with Ario in terms of... Um, uh, in terms of, of the Japanese animation? Yeah, as a, or as a specific yeah, example. I think the, sure. the, the anime is, is quite nice in Indonesia. There are some followers, but it is quite nice. In fact, uh, you know, we, we have a, a kids channel, uh, IEG, we run a kids channel called uh, Hore. Uh, we did acquire some Japanese animation, I think two, two or three years ago. And it did okay. It's not, not very spectacular, but it's, it's just okay. So, so I, I don't think that uh, at the moment the market is is uh, is looking for that it won't create a, a big hype well, it is nice to have uh, the the best performing animation here is still the local animation 
it, yeah. it is still the, the, the local animation. In fact, not only in the case of animation, I think in general, when it comes to the drama and movie and, and all sorts of content, the local content are much more popular in general than the foreign content. That is why when it comes to the foreign content who want to penetrate the Indonesian market, when you talk about the Finnish content, uh, probably outside of the countries that we are familiar with, like Japan, uh, like sorry, like India or Korea, it's probably very, very challenging, but they will have a much better chance if they try to sell their format. So okay. we do make remake of those drama from whatever country. I think uh, that is much more easier in my, in my personal opinion to penetrate the energy market when you sell the format rather than the finished program. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. Uh, so just before we continue, I'd just like to mention uh, that there will be a poll happening uh, right about now. So please do partake in that uh, while we continue to engage in the discussion. Um, so aside from the poll, let's move on. So let's look, talk about now about formats. So what sort of formats work best for delivery? Um, if I could stay, start with you, uh, Luffy. Uh, just in relation to, you know, we're talking about quality, um, like high definition or 4K even. Um, uh, yeah, can you please elaborate a bit on that? Also, oh, the quality of movie in the Max, in the, our platform, basically, because we are a person small screen, the quality is not, 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 uh, not a big, uh, I mean, uh, it's no matter about, uh, Customer don't need 4K in in small screen, right? Small so screen, yep. even 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 seven only had HD or FHD or more than enough for customer. Basically, it's depend on the basically we have wide very wide segment. So the, those uh, who wants to save their quota, those who no problem with quota. So we we provide more uh, for for SD to 4K. It's better for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah. Unless yeah. customer wants to cast to their TV, so maybe 4K, full SD and 4K is needed. <laughs> right. Great. Well, uh, Bernardi, did you have? Uh, yeah. From from FTA side of uh, side, I think uh, no need no need 4K. Yeah, of course, because Indonesia still half HD, even half HD, not not totally HD. So HD is it, it's okay. And about the the um, dub or subtitle, it depends on the huh. type program itself. For example, like uh, Indian drama series, uh, yes, because the main audience is housewife and, you know, uh, the habit of us housewife that uh, watching TV while also cooking or something like that. So uh, dubbing is very important on this case. So if you do only subtitle and then they cannot, they cannot follow the story. So dubbing is very important. So uh, it depends on the, on the program itself. For example, like uh, Western movie, like box office, Maybe subtitle is okay because the targeted uh, for uh, targeted for um, uh, uh, teenage and uh, maybe male audience, and for animation it depends also if uh, no dialogue of course no no need to be no, no need to be dubbed and if we talk about uh, Malaysian or like um, Upinipin for example no need to be dubbed because we know we we understand about the the, the dialogue so it depends on the the, uh, the content itself. Okay. Excellent. Um, well, I might bring it back to you, Ario, if I may. Just in relation, we did talk briefly about foreign um, content, and so just in terms of foreign production houses breaking into the uh, into the Indonesian market, um, how difficult do you think it is for them at this stage? Is it's not difficult, but it's complete. <laughs> uh, I mean. It's, it's always been like 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 uh, uh, choosing the right content, the right script, the right story, and then uh, the, the 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 actual target that the the, the content will produce. So um, nowadays, uh, I think something that uh, uh, easy one and then the, the personal one, uh, easy to follow, inspiring, and then update. It's it's kind of the the viewers uh, easy to 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 watch uh, of course series movies and others is still just kind of like a sport combined with lifestyle probably can be you know as a format new things and then uh, people can 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 
trial to to do the, the same thing like the the the, the, the uh, on the content side, something like that. So it has to be a combination. Uh, what kind of uh, a genre will be produced, and then uh, what's what's the target audience? Is a lifestyle sport or or others? So it has to be something that uh, inspiring to to the viewers to the the audience. Yeah, great. Um, Hendy, I'll throw it back to you then. Is that would that be something as well? Uh, your experience um, in terms of difficulty for the foreign production houses to break into the market? Yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, uh, for the foreign production company, you know, earlier I mentioned about that the the the, the, the most impo- most popular content are still the co- the local content. So when if you are a foreign production company uh, looking to enter the Indonesian uh, market. I think your best bet is to produce the Indonesian content. But the next question would be, would be how how good you are with Indonesian content since you are a foreigner. Of course, you will have yeah. to work with the with the with the local uh, people and and so forth. But uh, there has been some uh, benchmark or some 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 cases where uh, the, the 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 foreign company they produce Indonesian content. For example. Uh, I think last year or two years ago, Fox did produce one Indonesian uh, theatrical movie, and it was it was okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that it is the best uh, quality of the movie of the year, but but it is very acceptable. Uh, of course, they involve the, the the local creative people as well. So this is something that that you might wanna do. But the tricky part would be for the global players in, to do that is that you have to change your mindset into the local mindset, meaning that you have to be very very careful in terms of the cost, because the difficulty or the the problem when it comes to the foreigners going into Indonesian market to produce something, be it producing by their own or doing the joint production is the cost you know this is also one of the reasons why joint production uh, doesn't really work with indonesian companies because uh, you guys have different cost structure with us our cost structure is very very low and then for for foreigners sometimes they think this budget is impossible to produce or when they pitch the project to us they say we have a project that is very very uh, efficient in terms of budget but when we see when we see the budget it is still very expensive to our standard so i think this is the the kind of thing that uh, if you are a foreign company looking to do production in Indonesia, then you you have to be very very careful. Yep. Okay. Great. Well, yeah. Well, I guess talking about with that local content, um, in terms of the platforms that they best suit. So, if you've got the local content, we agree on that. They're trying to localize as much as possible. But what platform do you think um, is best suited? If we can sort of talk across the range of of platforms, whether it's free to air or pay TV or online video. Um, Luthvi, can I bring you in here? Uh, which platform do you think best suits local content in your opinion? Yeah, since I am from, from OTT, then OTT, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, I think all platform works. As, as I give example, some uh, movie from Theatrical, it's also when they already done from Theatrical, theatrical and goes to backstream and goes to OTT platform, I think it works. Also, uh, maybe go to the free to air also in the other pay TV, I still works since the movie have good uh, storytelling and good quality of the movie, right? Uh, so the customer basically chasing the, the the quality of movie, the quality of stories, instead of the yeah the platform. They can, if they love the, sto- the movie, they will uh, chasing Instead of um, in, from OTT or from Creative or from Linear, it's not, not yeah. Yep. I, I, okay, good. Cool. Yeah, fantastic. And yeah. Bernardi, would that be sort of your um, your take on it as well? Yeah. You leave OTT. I, I think I think um, local is still the king in across uh, across the platform, yeah. Because mm-hmm. you know, Indonesia actually we, we have still um, we have still um, like um, yeah uh, limitation in terms of the language. Uh, ability and something like that so um, uh, local content also the proximity also the closeness between the the the, the audience and also the the talent or the star itself for, for example for the movie or um, series so that's why uh, and also the culture itself yeah so that's why local still still the king across the platform you know, STV is actually maybe 
99% of our program is uh, uh, local, but yeah, we, we also uh, monitoring for the foreign content. If any uh, content that's suitable with us, like uh, we did previously with the uh, Turkish drama, Indian series, or uh, telenovela also, if any uh, content that may be suitable with, with, with our audience, and then we have to, uh, we have to acquire. Yeah. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. Well, I think obviously, um, and also the global audience will um, relate to this as well, but we're in unprecedented times uh, with the COVID-19 crisis has brought about a lot of change. I know out here in Australia, there's been uh, differences with in-home viewing being increased um, as people have been locked down and, and been staying in at home. So I guess the question, and if I can direct this over to you, Hendy, um, first, and then follow Ario with some comments, just in relation to that, how the COVID-19 crisis has brought, has it brought new um, viewing habits in Indonesia? Yeah, it, yep. it changed a lot in the industry. There are some winners and some losers, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. some, some losers, the losers in terms of the industry players are, I think, the production companies. So they cannot produce, you know, because, uh, because uh, of the, the, the limitation caused by the COVID. But uh, we have seen some interesting facts uh, cause, uh, as a result of this uh, COVID situation. And I think probably Lutfi can also clarify. Uh, in terms of the digital platform, I think almost all the players have a search of viewership. In our case also, we have a sister company, our OTT company called Video. Video, actually during this COVID, we have a record breaking uh, uh, audience in terms of the download, in terms of uh, viewership, in terms of minutes viewed, in terms of the, the, the number of people downloading our apps, Actually, at a certain point, we did reach number one on the App Store for the download for the worldwide, not only Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So, so that is very, very interesting part. So, that is also the reason why during this situation where a lot of companies they kind of seem to be in the defensive mode, but in our case for the digital, we kind of play offensively. Actually, we play offensive game, meaning that we buy a lot more programs than the normal times because we know the viewerships are uh, increasing a lot. Of course, uh, to be honest, it has not been followed by the revenue, even though we see the revenue also increase. But of course, uh, 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 we still see it as a good progress. Uh, uh, so I think obviously from the perspective of the of the uh, digital, it has been a good news. Yeah, for the free to air, uh, you know, Banar and I we are colleagues, so we 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 we, we speak a lot. And Banar, he kind of have a mixed feeling, meaning that he cannot have a new local production. But in terms of cost, he save a lot. You know, he does a lot of reruns. Yeah. You know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the good news is the rating is still very very good. You know, so it's very happy. And then we also uh, from the IEG. We run a lot of channels, and then we see that a lot of uh, uh, our channel gain uh, increase in terms of the viewership. In fact, uh, we we are launching another new kids channel in the next couple of weeks. So, right. like I said, we are playing it uh, aggressively uh, uh, because we see every situation, be it good or bad, there will be some threats and opportunities, and the COVID situation is no different. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, last I'll bring Ario in there, if I may. Um, in terms of the viewing habits, are you uh, have you can you sort of describe to us, I guess, in an Indo a typical Indonesian household, is is how are you sort of seeing this play out? Is there different devices being used rather than the main main screen, or uh, is that is the home uh, is the family congregating around the main screen, or are they going off to their bedrooms with other mobiles, or yeah, can you sort of Take us inside a, a, an, an average Indonesian home, if you may, and, and how the viewing habit potentially has changed um, from COVID crisis. Yes, uh, I agree with uh, Handy mentioned, and then of course this this situation unfortunately also gained for 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 the uh, digital uh, industry, uh, and then it also broadcasters. Like I said before. Um, this is like a typical, like a horizontal and vertical. On the vertical side, by hours now people can easy to watch 
together with uh, all the family members uh, in front of the big screen TV, like the terrestrial model. So they can watch uh, any time and uh, uh, any hours. And then uh, in the other side, uh, by using the OTT models and everything can access uh, by the internet, uh, mobile and everything to watch every day by genre, the easy to, to, to watch. And then also uh, in some case, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, genre like the education become like uh, nowadays is, is, is on demand because, because uh, peop, uh, students are uh, stay at home. So uh, some education uh, still has to continue. Then they watch through the, the, the connection on the internet. And then TV is one of the um, objective to, to watch on the, uh, And then also update information, news update is, is particularly will be again more higher attention from, from many viewers uh, and also by hours, by day. And then what else? Uh, 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 in terms of the, the, the using of, uh, connection uh, on the transportation side, on the delivery side, uh, they, they, they get the, the information, they can uh, watch anything from the mobile side models. Yeah. So I think um, there's a positive one, but also uh, this uh, set uh, condition also because of the COVID this, uh, this year. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. this will be continue. I think it will be continue um, uh, the habit, uh, creating the new the new model also, uh, and then like uh, like the uh, uh, said also the rerun also become like uh, easy to 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 watch for, for people, and then um, what else? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the new one like the, the cooking show become like easy for for every housewife. Uh, follow the, the instruction and everything. Yeah. So yep. it become like uh, more interactively. Yeah. In terms of, the, I guess, their purchasing ability, do you, do you think that, that um, the economic impact in the country, do you see that being uh, playing out in terms of affordability, I suppose, for services? Is their purchasing ability going to diminish um, as the potentially as the economic climate worsens or, or do you think that's not even going to be a factor? In, in the same in the same situation, um, I think uh, the revenue is not yet become like like the, the indicator because most of the the, the operators be, uh, uh, offering the the easy one, uh, giving the promo during that. So they, they now they can get the numbers of the the the, the, the viewers, the users uh, uh, grow but not yet, as Hendy said, on the revenue side. Yeah, okay, great. We'll keep them with the financing sort of theme, if I may. Um, just, Bernardi, I'll, I'll bring you in there. In terms of financing opportunities um, that are present in, in Indonesia, do, do you find that there, um, is there any particular bodies or anything that, um, uh, that uh, some of the global audience could tap into locally to, um, to address some financing in the country? Mm, do you mean uh, uh, to be produced in local production? Yeah, so for production, so for feature films, um, to, for the TV series. Um, so even if it's, it's not so much on even the financing, but just with distribution opportunities, I guess where to, um, you know, to get a bit of assistance in the country is there. I um, mean, I'll throw it open to, uh, to Luffy as well or, or to the other um, Ario and Henry, yeah. if you've got any thoughts around that. Okay, actually, uh, I think the same with other territories. I think that uh, usually we we are, we are doing with the licensing and um, also uh, yeah, licensing is common common practice in Indonesia and it's, it's like a, a, a common practice in in other country. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm agree with Pak Bernard and also Pak Hendy already mentioned previously. Uh, basically, <clears throat> some for distribution financing. Uh, have some oppor uh, same opportunities between uh, feature film and serial. Basically, there are some some uh, fans of the feature film and yeah, serial right. And for more personally, personal mo movie more goes to the OTT platform. More feature film can go to cinema first, then after that can goes to the OTT or others others channel like TV yep. or linear. 
Okay, great. Um, so we've obviously talked about just localization as well um, of services uh, in terms of the importance of it. Um, is that would be one of the key takeaways, um, do you think, in terms of uh, coming in, or is that the key takeaway uh, coming into the uh, for uh, foreign sellers looking to get into the country? Make sure you localize. I think the the key is still with the content. The key is still with the content. Like I said, you have to have the content that the audience can relate. There has been probably some slight difference in terms of the what kind of content that can penetrate free to air or digital or pay TV. Uh, because I think in general, in general, the pay TV audience probably will be much a little bit more uh, sophisticated than the free to air, for example. In, so probably they will have. Uh, social and economic status higher in terms of the free-to-air audience in the in, in terms of general, but all in all, it's still the content that the local audience can relate. Gotcha. All right, great. Well, look, I, we're as we're almost well, we're coming closing in um, on time. It's sort of just under ten minutes to have a chat uh, a little bit more. But on that, I'd like to ask each of the panelists and, and it, just to throw it out there a bit more, um, uh, a bit more fun with it. But I guess what's the one thing? Uh, the one thing that you hope that the audience that's listening can take away from this conversation about Indonesia? If I um, may start with um, you, Ario. Well, the co-production will be more interesting. Uh, so both party, both uh, side can be uh, learned and, 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 and try to find which kind of uh, uh, content genre or, or uh, models that can create together and penetrate to the market because uh, like as you mentioned earlier uh, on the slide there's so many platform now and then it's also a very huge uh, segment from C, B, A, B and then everything so definition on, on creating the, the, the new content the new format it has to be together I mean uh, give us some some sample give us uh, uh, introduce us to do the new one format and then we join together to, to create something new and then uh, giving the, the new, new what you call it, the new, new uh, option, new, uh, new interesting one to the viewers. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, um, oh, well, let me throw it out there as well in terms of, uh, so what's the next important new trend that you think we'll be talking about at the next year's plugged in ATF, plugged in series? What, what, what important trend for Indonesia do you think is coming? Maybe I'll start with you, Bernardi. Hmm. I think um, challenging, yeah. But I hope uh, it will be many choices of the contents because uh, we 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 um, we uh, understand that content is the king, still the king, whatever the platform and until uh, whenever. So content is still the king. So we hope uh, we hope uh, many choices of the content, diversity of the content, and. We, we, we will we will uh, accept it if uh, we have many choices. Yep. Okay, great. Hendy, would you ag agree? Yeah, I think next year, your question is what will be discussed next year in this kind of event. I think next year we will still be discussing, obviously, uh, digital. The digital will be even, even more important. And I still believe in the next one year or even in the next few years, uh, in the context of Indonesia, free-to-air will still be very, very relevant because Indonesia is pretty much a free-to-air country uh, for, for a number of reasons. So, so I, think, uh, I think next year's discussion will still uh, be about the, the uh, obviously about the content, but the, uh, I think digital is a no-brainer, but I still believe that uh, it will be very, very relevant. Okay, great. Well, uh, and... Uh... Luthi, um, your thoughts for in terms of uh, the next ATF plugged in series. What what do you think we'll be chatting about? Yeah, yeah, agreed with Pak Benardi, Pak Hendy. Of course, the, in the future, <coughs> instead of linear, there are also uh, maybe digital will be happen, happen, very happening in the next future, right? Then and also instead of any any platform, its content is still the key because. Uh, Relevant content to customer will be will get more viewers than it's back. Uh, the yeah, yep, yeah, okay, yeah. And Ario, 
For me, uh, yes, of course, content, but also the technology and the connection. Because in the future, of course, the terrestrial is still there. Uh, strong demand on, on, on the massive uh, or, or coverage of, of Indonesia, the terrestrial. But then the, the people or the family members uh, more wanted to, to get is obviously us also as well. Um, we are mirroring to, to, to our personal is the connectivity. So mm. I think uh, digital is, is have to be combined content and also uh, the good quality for connection. I mean, like for internet or bandwidth and everything. So it has to be combined for the next few years. Excellent. Oh, well, we're pretty much out of time. So we've it's been uh, invigorating. It's great to have. Um, uh, so thank you all. I'd like to thank all the panelists for your time today. So um, Hendy, thank you. Bernardi. Yes. Ario and Lifty, thank you very much. You. Um, look, I'm, for your, all your insights and input, it's much appreciated. I think we can all agree uh, there's much to be excited about, uh, about buying into the Indonesian market. Content still reigns king by the sound of things, but of course, with a touch of localization. Um, but I think what take it away from here is also the, um, the encouraging uh, aspect of, of welcoming, of bringing, um, of, of uh, selling into 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 Indonesia and that, but that's welcome. So um, I'd also like to thank uh, the organizers, particularly Lenita Mendoza for, um, for organizing this uh, session. And of course, to everyone that's been listening uh, for the audience today. So um, I hope um, that you do tune in to the next round of the ATF's Plugged In Series 2020, um, continuing on next month, uh, where we'll be de delving into the markets of uh, Thailand, um, China, and Singapore, and there we go. So you should be able to see it on your screen. So in the in the meantime, um, please thank you again to the panelists. Lovely to chat with you. Um, I'm sure you can be contacted if if needed. Uh, in otherwise, everyone, please stay safe, and um, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you.